I mean, as we spoke about last time, I gave you some ideas on why context is important. And I opened the door towards this model, this three-stage model RPI. Um, that's reviews, personnel, or people, uh, and institutions. So let's just say reviews, people, and institutions. They're the three areas to research if you're given a particularly difficult subject that you've never maybe looked at before. And certainly if you're working in media, or if you'll become a researcher, if you become a journalist, what you will need to do is to know your subject. You'll need to know what you're talking about. You look like you do. So I thought what I'd do is I'd focus on the first stage of that, and that is R for reviews. Now, reviews, often people just go to Rotten Tomatoes or they'll go to IMDb and think that's it. Your job is to find out really why something's important. And that usually can be discovered through box office statistics or through uh, viewing figures, ratings, a particular number of downloads, maybe. Well, what a review does, it shows you how the institutional media or people that are credible, gatekeepers, critics, commentators, people who hold a kind of um, a broader cultural or social esteem. Those guys may not be academics or they may not be working in the field of academia. They may just be journalists, like I say, film reviewers. Um, those guys are really important because what they do is they report back on A, what something is and tell you what it is. We were talking about Star Wars last week. Well, you know, they'll probably include a moment or a line or two explaining why it's important. But also they'll tell you, if you collate enough of them, how something's being received, what the general feeling critically is about the artefact that you're going to talk about. Now, this takes a bit of understanding about the context for each of the sources. So, you know, just going for Billy Bob's review site online, that's fine as long as Billy Bob is highly regarded and he's a, a large number of followers and he is held up by other critics as having esteem. Otherwise, the danger is it just becomes somebody else's opinion. And you can go on Twitter for that, really, can't you? So what you're looking for are people who know what they're talking about and have a degree of prominence or a status. I mentioned in the last film this idea, I think I've, I think I finished off with Peter Tosh's quote about the, um, the historian requiring a sense of imagination. There's an element of that here, because what you're doing is if you're collating enough of these reports, enough of these overviews, these critical and review responses, you can start drawing commonalities between them and you can start then reading between the lines, making summative comments, doing a sort of survey of, of kind of opinions. And I, I say institutional media, that could be the BBC, it could be The Guardian, it could be The Independent, it could be The Times, it could be The New York Times, it could be The Washington Post. You know, things which have a kind of sense of status. Now, what you have to do is often keep one eye on whether this is credible information, whether, whether this is information that's trustworthy, is it indeed accurate? So much of what is on Wikipedia and IMDb is actually inaccurate. And your job as an academic is to sort through that and to chart a more accurate course, not to take the first thing you come across. I think that's what throws people because it's asking you to go deeper than just one click. And most people can't be bothered to do that. And when you ask them to do it, they feel like it's a, you're, like, you're looking at this too far in depth and you think, well, no, that's your job. That's what you're supposed to do. Now, the thing is, which can hold this process up are finding the right keywords. Um, and often that you, as you go through the process, you will accrue keywords. If you find out about George Lucas, as you're reading the piece or review or feature, um, you will find maybe something on Gary Kurtz, one of the producers, on Ralph McQuarrie, who's really important as a production designer that the Mandalorian television show kind of quotes at the end of their sort of credits on the show, which kind of is a nod to how important he is to what Star Wars actually is. Those kind of stories you then start to uncover. And as you do that, you uncover more keywords. So combining keywords 
making the keywords less obvious. If you pump Star Wars into a search engine, well, you'll get the whole world. But once you start doing that, you start finding these little stories that you would never have found otherwise. So avoid obvious singular words. Consider less well-known names. You may find someone who's worked with the person you're talking about, who may have some interesting ideas or viewpoints they can share on that, that maybe no one else is using. Combine terms, combine keywords. Um, I think the more specific and the more interesting, the more creative your keywords are when you put them into the search engine, the more chance you've got of finding something very interesting. I'm opening the door here really for something else, which maybe if you're watching this as a level four first year student, will be a bit strange, which is the idea of secondary sources, books, proofed, edited, academic texts. What I have found is usually really good setup material in the, in the introductions to books on a subject. If you find a book on Star Wars, there might be an opening chapter maybe, or even um, an introduction uh, that could have lots of good information you can use. You find in the introductions of most, say, edited collections, for example, you know, a book which is made up of separately authored articles. When you look at that, you might find at the beginning of those some really good context material that isn't anywhere else because those guys would have researched it and spent the time and following these kind of methods. And remember, when you're looking at secondary texts or secondary books or academic books for contextual material, for overview material, and that's what this is, reviews is really about overview, um, you may find good stuff in there which leads you to other books. Check out the bibliographies of the book you're looking at. Look at the indexes. You know, you've really got to cast your net around because what you're looking for as a, an academic is to get a sense of what something is and reviews and features enable you to do that. But you're also looking for something which nobody else has got. So you're not just repeating the same thing. So way forward, when you're looking for reviews and features, you know, commentaries, interviews, people who have made the films, who may want to reflect on the process. These could be quite old, some of them. If you're writing about Star Wars, a 1980 interview with Irving Kirshner, the director of The Empire Strikes Back. Within that, there might be some reflections on the whole process of the franchise, but you don't know. Depends what you're looking for. So along with reviews, features, interviews are really good. Press kits and biographies are great. Just basic nuts and bolts. Good foundation information that people don't take seriously. They just assume, oh, well, it's on IMDb, why bother? Might not be correct. I have found obituaries can be quite useful. Obituaries in newspapers, uh, online versions of which we've got here at the University of Portsmouth. Obituaries are terrific because in those, there's lots and lots of good overview detail that you can use and adapt for your own writing. Remember, one of the key words here is synthesis. You'll be synthesizing this information, collating it, considering it, finding out what the recurring points are, maybe finding something that nobody else has or that nobody else has focused on. I would always go for trusted opinion. Remember, if you're taking from an institutional news source, which often is trusted opinion, that's been edited, that's been proofread, it's been sub-edited, been peer-reviewed or assessed at some form. What you're trying to do is to create a debate and not sensationalise a point. Keep an eye on the, the pitch and the way that the review is written. You can obviously continue to compile research if you're looking at institutions and people later on. But if you've never heard of Star Wars, why not just find out what people think of it? That's really kind of what it's about. Remember, as you're going through this research, sift through it. What are the keywords that are coming through that research? What have you found? And I think this is really, really important. Bear in mind what your story is going to be. Don't get rid of anything because you never know if what you found might come in handy for something else. But edit what you've got. Remember, keep editing as you go. If you can, try and get it down and distill it into information which is not overwhelming. Because the danger is if you've got all this information at the end, 
and then you've got to try and distill that and that takes time so as you go in each stage of this process edit consider what the piece is going to be talking about everything you found you might think oh well, i'm not using that we're back to the iceberg theory remember you know lots about it your writing is going to get better okay next up we'll be talking about people personnel practitioners mm -hmm.